Today I'm going to talk about resiliency patterns, why it might be needed, when it works to use them, and when better not to use, how to decide which pattern is the best match for your case, and uh, how to implement them using .NET. So let's move to our agenda. Um, as you can see, we will discuss what, what might be the reason of system failure and we will go through most popular patterns. I will try to explain how they works from architecture perspective and uh, why they are needed. We will also talk a bit about poly. After that, I will show just short demo how it works using poly for .NET. And uh, after that, we will have some time for, for your questions and maybe some discussions. Uh, yeah, so what can cause system failure? There might be a lot of reasons, depends on what, your project specific, uh, but the most popular of them is Z4. Uh, both on-prem and cloud, cloud services might be unavailable from time to time. Uh, network issues when something happened with internet connections in case you use some third-party services, they might not respond from time to time, and it might create some latency on, on your system, on the client side. And for example, when you use database connection, uh, your database might be also overloaded, and it might also return the response with some delay, and it might cause some timeout issues. Uh, so what we can do with, with all types of failures and how to prepare our system to have expected reaction in such cases. And uh, I guess a lot of developers will say, we can use retry pattern. And yes, uh, that's correct. Uh, it is the one of simplest way to avoid transient failures. We can configure our system with some instructions on how often uh, and how many times our request should be sent in case of failure. In case uh, you maybe don't know so much about retry and patterns, you will probably write something similar to that code. Uh, let's take a look on that code. So here we can see specification for timeout configuration, how much we are going to retry and what what is our retry delay? Uh, and we will specify condition to, to break our loop. Uh, and actually that's that's not the best the best way how we can implement it uh, because uh, the retry pattern itself has some few major drawbacks and it's much better to upgrade and modify it depends on your needs. So uh, let's maybe talk about the drawbacks. For example, if server returns any client failure status code, for example, unauthorized, no matter how much time we will use retrying, uh, retrying, it will not help since the issue is not related to some server load or network issues. Uh, so we should handle that and uh, behave differently based on status code we received. So we should apply some status code filtering. And uh, also since the server might be overloaded, you might not receive the response from the server at all. In that case, um, you should avoid too long waiting and give the instructions for your system on what to do in that case. There is a few patterns that might help you with that. And we will also talk about them soon. Uh, let's also imagine that you want to call third party API and few other services trying to send the request at exact same moment to the same API. And uh, of course, server might not be able to process all of them and uh, it will simply fail. With retry pattern, you will call it again and again. Other services might also do the same. 
and will it help to to get success result and usually not and will 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 it take down the server most likely yes so what we can do with that issue and with that drawback and one good idea is to use non constant intervals and there is also a few patterns which offers a good implementation for that. We will also discuss them soon. It is it might be exponential back of jitter pattern and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, okay, so let's move back to, to the code. Uh, this example written without some libraries like poly to show how it works under the hood because if it's just poly configuration, it might be not uh, understandable how it works. So based on previous drawbacks, it contains a list of status codes of response where retry, retry might help. So for example, when you got bad gateway, gateway timeout, uh, some too many requests or something like that, you might use retry pattern at, uh, at that case and Usually it helps because it's some kind of transient issues that might happen quite often. Uh, also, you can see timeout specified for HTTP client. Uh, it is one of the way to implement timeout pattern in, in .NET, in just real .NET without some libraries. And with current instructions, the request will be canceled if it will not get the response after five seconds. Uh, if the problem that caused uh, the request to fail is not likely to resolve itself almost immediately, uh, retrying might not help. It might even uh, make make matter worse. Also, you should be careful with idea potency here, since not all requests might be retried a few times. Um, Actually, not going to dive deep into that topic, uh, into topic of idea potency, but I will just add uh, useful links uh, where you can read about that and understand uh, better how how to use uh, uh, retrying and what the idea potency is. So, yeah, that Scott looks better and more understandable, but it's also not handles all the uh, tricky cases that might happen with with your system and with uh, third party APIs. So, what is the best way to identify retry timeout? Uh, we can, for example, specify one second and retry ten times, but it not, might be not enough to resolve server issues. We also can specify ten seconds delay, uh, but in that case, our system will fail. Uh, will will wait for too long and it might cause issues on our side so what can be done with that of course it's a popular issue and there is few popular solutions one of them is exponential backoff that pattern gives uh, instructions on how to use dynamic timeout for example in case you don't get success on the first try Let's try one more time in two seconds, then in four seconds, then it, for example, in eight seconds, uh, and uh, it will give time for the server to process previous load and increase your chance to got success. Uh, but uh, let's take a look on that from another perspective. Uh, what will happen in case just your client sends too much requests? and server filing just because of your requests. Uh, you will try again and again, and your requests will come to the server altogether in the same time. First time in two seconds and in four seconds, and it will create big lots, as you can see on that diagram. So how we can avoid such situation. And there is a place where random number generator might help us to distribute that lot. In addition to our exponential timeout, we can add just a tiny value from zero to one usually, and it will send our request more smoothly without sending too much at that moment. And after implementing it, 
uh, our load di diagram will look similar to that one. And as you can see, we will just have one big load and after that, it will be just distributed. Okay, so let's move to the next slide and to the, to the next pattern, which is circuit circuit breaker pattern. It's sometimes for me hard to just pronounce uh, how we can save time in case server is not responding for, for a long time. Let's imagine situation that our requests to weather API are failing for a long time. And of course it affects our system and our users. In addition, it creates load on client side since request keeps sending, doing timeout, retries, and so on. Sometimes it's better to have some static response and not wait for too long for the real response. We can configure a mechanism which will identify long failures and simply block requests uh, to that server for some period of time. This is what circuit breaker doing. Uh, the circuit breaker can be viewed as a state machine that starts in the closed state. This is normal state and allows the flow of requests across it. When it, a problem is detected, the circuit breaker moves to an open state, blocking all requests for a specified period. So it might be one minute or mm, any other custom period you need. After that period elapses, the circuit breaker moves to half open state uh, where the first request is treated as a test request. And uh, just in case this request succeed, uh, this, uh, the circuit moves to normal uh, open state. And uh, in case it fails, the circuit moves back to, uh, to open state and uh, again, waiting for, for that specified period. And of course, there is a libraries for different programming languages uh, which implement that pattern all, already. And uh, you will just need to configure parameters based on your needs. And for example, for .NET, you can use poly library also to, to implement that uh, quite, quite simple. Uh, and uh, OK. so we decided that we can use circuit breaker, but what can we return? And uh, in case circuit breaker are in open state, we can have some predefined responses. And uh, here is the place where we can use fallback pattern. Using fallback pattern, you can prepare response using different approaches. Of course, that should be defined individually for each case but I will show you the most popular methods uh, that you can use. For example, method can return predefined constant or a constant object. Sometimes it works to configure local cache and use value from that cache. cache. Also, in case your system configured uh, to correctly handle null response, you can also return null response. In case your system are waiting for 500 in such cases and it is configured to handle 500, you can also return uh, 500. And uh, on fallback pattern, it is usually called fail fast. But in case it's crucial for you to process the request and have some additional logic in case of long failure, you might also cre create an alternative fun function which uh, might mimic some, some logic from the third party API and try to process uh, your request and try to just simulate the logic from third party. Yeah, and uh, as I said, it is not limited by Z4 and any custom or hybrid solutions will be also fine. Uh, okay, so what's, what is Poly? Uh, Poly is a powerful .NET standard library which already have implementation for all the patterns uh, from my presentation. All you need to do is to just install it to your project and make some configurations. Uh, usually they are straightforward in, mo in most cases and provide enough level of flexibility. 
So on that step, you shouldn't face any huge issues. Uh, you can not only specify some instructions for different policies, but also you can wrap them together and use as a one policy. Uh, but uh, with the wrapping, you might face some issues because uh, it is uh, very important uh, on which order you will wrap your policy. And I will show it a bit on my demo and probably it will be understandable enough how to, how to use wrapping here in poly. So let's, let's move to the demo. Uh, so what I have here is a code which which will try to call to the weather API. Uh, let me find where it is. Yeah, so we have base URL to weather API, and also we have some policy handler already configured, and we will try different different ways and uh, try different policies here. Uh, I will use weather API, which is not my API. So I will also use Fiddler app to mimic some, some transient failures, timeouts and so on. So let's, let's start and try to, to show you how it works. Yeah, and on that part, uh, just in case you will have any questions to code or any other questions related to 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 the logic, you you may just ask it right now. Do not wait to to the end. So, firstly, I will just try to explain what it is. Uh, we will use uh, retry policy, timeout policy, and circuit breaker policy, and after that, we will try to wrap them together. For retry policy, we will use retry pattern uh, with a jitter and exponential backoff. And I will specify retry count for five and wait first time, wait for one second. And of course, with exponential backoff, as you saw on the diagram, it will just increase and increase each time. Uh, firstly, we will use just timeout policy. And uh, I will try to, to send the request. Actually, it is on my other monitor. Yeah, I will move it out of here just to show you Fiddler and Fiddler requests. And in case I will execute my request, it will go to weather API, got success response. And uh, our API will also got success response because any rule are not uh, enabled right now. So it is working quite, quite simple and fine. And what would happen in case we have some timeout on the weather API service? Let's enable the rule. And that rule contains uh, seven second timeout between response will, will come to, to our service. So what would happen in case I will send the request uh, in that case? As we can see, I send the request and I'm waiting for response from weather API. But before I got the response for seven seconds, uh, I see that my request has been failed already for about six seconds. Uh, but even in case I will got success response with se seven seconds, but my timeout uh, uh, policy has been configured to five seconds, it will not wait for too long and just file your request. And uh, there is a case when it is very useful and you can use that to not wait for too long. Let me show you one more time maybe. Yeah, as you can see, my request will be filed firstly before I got response. Yeah, that is how timeout policy works.
Let's move to retry policy. And as I told before, it will try to retry for five times our request just in case we got non-successful and transient HTTP error. So it might be something from 500 or uh, 408 and some other transient errors. Uh, let's start it one more time. So firstly, I will disable all rules to, to see that response comes without any issues, just in case rules are not enabled. Try to send the request and yes, as you can see, we will receive 200. And for now, let's let's specify rule to, to got 500 and check what our system will do with that 500. I'm executing one more time. And as you can see, you, uh, our system trying to, to retry and retry our request to Weather API. And as you can see, uh, timeout between that request are not static and in, it increases from, from one to, to uh, from each to the next, in, it increases. And for first time it one second and after that with exponential backoff and jitter, it just increases and increases. So just in case I will execute the request and uh, issue will be resolved on fly, I will receive success. Uh, my request will also got success and we will be able to, to see a correct response here. So that is how retry pattern working. Uh, and uh, as I said before, it might be a tricky case to use policy wrap and you should be very careful because ordering are uh, very important here. So just in case you will specify retry policy first and timeout policy second, uh, retry policy will be wrapped on top of timeout policy. So let me show you the difference. After that, we will try to, to change them So for now, when I'm sending the request, it just waiting for five seconds. And after it will not wait for, for the response and the response didn't come, it tries one more time. And then one more time because we have retry, retry pattern specified. Just in case the issue has been resolved, it will got success response on the for example, force retry, as you can see here. So let's let's check what will happen in case we will change the order and how the system would behave.
I forgot to enable rule. Let's enable timeout rule here. Execute the response. And as you can see here, without any retries, our request has been failed. It is because for that case, we tried to wrap timeout policy on top of retry policy. And that's why just in case we got a uh, not successful response from timeout policy, the request has been failed without any retries. So that is why you should be careful uh, specifying uh, that wrap uh, instructions and uh, think about the correct order. Yeah, another thing I will just show you is how circuit breaker working with retry policy. In that case, we will need 500 response. So we are trying to send the request, retry happening. And just on the third try, since the we have specified circuit breaker, it will come to the open state and it will return a broken circuit exception. So. We can just simply handle that exception and specify anything what we need to do in case broker will move, uh, circuit breaker will move to open, st uh, yeah, to, to open state. So after it will move to open state, it will not continue sending any request to, to third party API. And in that case, you will not just load uh, third party API and you will be able to uh, somehow uh, mimic uh, third-party API logic and return predefined response, some constant value or whatever you need. Uh, yeah, so that's all for for the demo part. Let's move back to presentation. Uh, here I have added a few useful links that you may may check. And it is having some good article about Poly from plural side, a Microsoft article about some architecture perspective of uh, resiliency patterns. Also, I have YouTube channel for one guy from one guy that uh, just trying to explain all that uh, cases and all retry patterns in simple terms. It is uh, on Ukrainian language, but I hope you will find it useful uh, to, to just check. Maybe it will help you. And uh, another link is for idempotency to read what it is and how you should handle that when you will try to specify some retry patterns. Yeah, so that's all from my side. Just in case you have any questions, feel free to ask. Thank you, Pavlo. Uh, yeah, guys, if uh, someone has any question, please uh, just unmute and ask or use chat or raise your hand.